On the 10th of June, the London Royal Society, the home of British science, quickly filled with members of the financial industry as well as experts in land use and development for the Global Landscapes Forum on Investment. The world has given itself until the end of this year to clinch a global climate agreement and set sustainable development goals for the next 15 years, and it's time to involve those with real money. A very, very significant part of the solutions will, can be found through providing fair, affordable, long-term capital to smallholders. Um, from a financial return perspective, this seems to make sense. From a broader development perspective, this seems to make sense. And from a global public goods perspective, it seems to make sense. What we need to do is to explain how this is to be done without killing the idea with high tr transaction costs. The participants discussed all aspects of the channeling of capital towards the inhabitants and users of landscapes in developing countries where sustainable development is most important to address global issues such as poverty and climate change. There was talk of risk management, private sector involvement in existing initiatives such as Red Plus, new forms of investment funds and a real sense of urgency. The projects are there. We shouldn't even be sitting here talking about it. The amount of projects that are credible, bankable <coughs> projects sitting in the area where I'm in, I could today in a matter of an hour and a half bring you together with 10, 15 credible projects. How would you like to invest in an opportunity of 93 to 250 million consumers who need processed basic agriculture into food? And there is clearly an appetite from large multinational financial operators and agri-food companies to make their industries less damaging to the human and natural fabric of developing countries. We reach other investors so we can leverage, we have a bigger leverage. And then we meet with the companies and then we bring about our concerns and we try to yes, accompany the company so they can improve. Um, we might go as far as using our voting rights, you know, to pressure companies. Those companies that perform, more, that perform really poorly in terms of the environmental and social uh, performance, we might exclude them from our investments. Yet a lot of work remains to be done to bridge the gaps between those places where the money is and those where it is needed. Investing in landscapes is feels like the next big thing for us. Um, but, and I think there are a few uh, buts here. Understanding natural capital is important, and I know many of us are involved as well in, in that space, uh, and how that links to ecosystem services and, and the provisioning of services is really important. I think another important aspect of working uh, at, at landscape scale is that there is much more engagement with communities uh, that occupy part or the entire landscape, and that is very challenging. Trying to achieve financial, social, and environmental returns is not easy. A good place to start would be to make sure that everyone along the investment chain speaks the same language, one that resonates with the asset manager, crunching numbers here in London, as well as the farmers in need of better seeds in tropical regions. And for the day's keynote speaker, this is not far from the language of love. If you want a picture in your own particular space, how you make a transformation in sustainable land landscapes, you need all those elements. You need love, you need, you need reason, you need power, which I think I can call uh, the trinity of transformation.